Welcome. Um, in the economics news, you have heard certainly many times about um, the, the dilemma that uh, uh, policy authorities have in balancing their books. Um, debates about, about the fiscal uh, the fiscal deficit is uh, debates are ongoing have always been there not just in the U.S. but also in other in other countries. Lots of pressure on the government to balance the budget, but also pressure on the government to stimulate the economy through expenditures, uh, to stimulate the economy through cutting taxes. But the risk is that, uh, in the short run at least, uh, there is a, a risk that if expenditures are increasing faster than, than the revenue, of course the deficit is going to expand. Also, if, you, if the government chooses to simulate economic activity but cut, by cutting taxes, in the short run you may have a, redu a reduction in, in tax revenue, which also happens, for example, when, government, when countries embark in trade liberalization by removing or re reducing uh, tariffs, that reduces the revenue. It, may, it, it then may increase the, the deficit. What we have seen in the, in, uh, historically is that there is a, a linkage between the two deficits which government, governments face, which is the budget deficit and the current account deficit or trade deficit. And those tend to move together. Countries that are, are facing large current account deficits uh, typically also are facing large fiscal deficits. That's why they are referred to in the literature as twin deficits, as if they are born at the same time. Uh, and there is a linkage going from one to the other or, uh, and, and, and vice versa. So when you look at uh, the U.S., for example, uh, it's, it's facing a substantial current, uh, current account deficit. Uh, in 2010, it was about uh, negative to 3.2% uh, of, of GDP. That's quite a substantial uh, deficit. Uh, whereas, say, for China, it's the other way around. They're facing a current account surplus, which means that they're exporting more than they're importing. They get descending to the rest of the world more than they are receiving uh, in terms of um, uh, uh, exports. Um, that has been uh, Typically, the case over the several years, I was looking at uh, in, in the year 2000, for the U.S., the current account deficit was about 4.2 percent negative. Uh, for China, it was about 1.7 percent positive. At the same time, uh, in 2010, the U.S. faces um, a, a substantial uh, fiscal deficit. If you look at what is called the, the net lending uh, position, it was about negative 10 percent, which means that the U.S. Uh, is, is uh, spending more than uh, the U.S. government is spending more than it is, it is uh, receiving. So we, it's interesting to then think about what would be the channels through which the two deficits are related. Why is it that they tend to, to, uh, to move in the, in, the, in the same direction? So that if you're looking at a, at, a, at a chart that looks at the trend of current account deficit and budget deficit, you'll see that they move in the, in the same direction. So um, if you have a government that's running a budget deficit, that means that the government is in need of borrowing to finance the deficit. So the government will, ha will have to issue bonds to finance the deficit because there is a limitation to how much they can actually uh, monetize the deficit, which means uh, print money to, uh, or, uh, to finance the deficit, which technically means borrowing from the, from the central bank. So if, since the government will have to borrow, that means that as the, budge, as the budget deficit increases, as the need for the government, uh, extra financing for the government increases, that means that the, the, the public that's going to finance the deficit is going to require higher interest from the government. If, if the government wants me to pay, to give, to, to pay, uh, to give them money to finance a, a deficit, and the deficit, the more money they want, I'm going to ask for a higher uh, interest rate. So what you'll see is that as the deficit increases, as the budget deficit increases, if we say for, for the U.S., uh, as the deficit increases, then that 
is going to be accompanied by an increase in the interest rate. So the government, it becomes more expensive for the government to, to borrow as the deficit increases. And we'll talk about what happens if, in fact, that goes out of control, if the, the deficit increases, ri rises really, really high, as we, as we, would see, we, as we have been seeing uh, in, in Europe, European countries, Greece, and uh, uh, that uh, Italy is also facing uh, s uh, serious problems, that can degenerate to serious sovereign debt crisis. So once the, uh, as the, the deficit increases, the, the interest rate goes up because the government has to pay a higher interest rate. But as the interest rate goes up, what you'll see is that the exchange rate of the dollar is going to appreciate. So appreciation. So relative to the rest of the world, because of the demand for US dollars as the, the, the interest rate in, in, in increases. But then what happens when the exchange rate in, uh, appreciates? As the exchange rate appreciates, that means that um, two things are going to happen. One is that US exports becomes uh, more expensive. for foreign buyers, whereas foreign goods become cheaper for U.S. consumers, for foreign consumers. which means that you, you will end up seeing that exports, U.S. exports will go down and imports will tend to rise. And this is what is going to, to create the trade deficit. So you'll see that a budget deficit is going to eventually uh, link to, uh, 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 lead to a, a trade deficit. And that's why when you look at the data, we tend to see that in periods where the deficit, budget deficit was rising, we also see uh, the trade deficit rising. Now, of course, there are limits to how much the deficit, the deficit will, 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 the budget deficit can increase without being detrimental to the, to the economy, be, be debilitating to economic activity. What you have seen in the case of uh, what that led to the, to the European uh, debt crisis was a situation where debt was become, had become as unsustainable and the government basically were facing the risk of bankruptcy. Just uh, like firms, uh, uh, enterprises or households Excessive borrowing leads, to, uh, leads to, to insolvency where a government is unable to service the debt. And, the, the, and the, there, came, there comes to a situation where even promises of higher interest rates does not attract uh, investors enough to be able to buy. To buy uh, investors are, are not interested in buying government uh, securities because they see them, them as risk. So the risk is too high. So that's, that's one of the, of, the, of the limitations that governments cannot infinitely, indefinitely continue to borrow to finance a rising deficit. That's one. The other limitation is that, as I, as I said before, faced with the deficit, the governments have options of borrowing, but they also have options of monetary, monetizing the deficit, which is uh, using seniorage or borrowing from the central bank. To, to finance the, the deficit. The problem is that uh, in countries, say, in, uh, that are members of monetary unions, so for example, for, for Greece, they have no control over monetary policy because that's controlled by the central bank of the zone, the, the European Central Bank. So that takes away already one of the policy tools that countries, that governments have in, in managing uh, fiscal policy and, and um, uh, monetary, monetary policy. Of which means that uh, while 
currency unions have very substantial advantages, they come with, a con with, 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 uh, with constraints in terms of limitation in, in, the, in the policy uh, toolkit that countries can use. So that is a dilemma. And I'm sure when you, if you have been following the news uh, in, on, on the debt, uh, European debt crisis, especially last year, there was, there was talk, a lot of talk about the threat to the European Union, the, 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 European, uh, the, the, the common currency, uh, the Eurozone. But I think things are still not settled, but uh, there is no, no uh, I don't think there's a threat to the zone breaking up or anything. But that shows you that while there may be advantages to currency union in terms of um, f uh, easier movements of goods and, uh, and services, easier movement of, of uh, human capital also, there are, there are constraints. There are other regions, uh, even including in developing countries in Africa, for example, that have uh, uh, common currency areas. Uh, add some sub-regional uh, groupings are moving towards there. So it's, it's a long process, but because governments understand that there are, there are advantages, but there are also also cost. So this was uh, mostly about trying to see how we can explain the fact that over time we have seen budget deficits and trade deficits moving together. It has to do with the financing of the deficit, implications on interest rate, and implications on exchange rate, which, have, uh, which drive exports and import, resulting in a trade deficit or surpluses. Thank you.